Is your house haunted? Is your home look something like this? Boy, I have the solution for you. You can use an EMF, short for electromagnetic field, reader. This is a device that detects fields generated by power going through conductors. You can use one to detect live wires in your walls, but alternatively used for ghost hunting purposes. But those ghost hunter EMF readers are disgustingly overpriced when it's a very simple circuit and it costs pennies for the companies to build such devices and they sell it for fat profits. So let's get to the building of this instrument. The soul of the whole device is the detector circuit which is basically a high gain amplifier. Similar to an audio amplifier, you could even use this circuit as one, but for our use case, we'd like to specialize this to pick up noise. Orphan electromagnetic signals from the air. I prepared a whole detector circuit onto this breadboard for you, to see that it's a very simple circuit. I'm using four BC182 and 182A BGT PNP transistors. If you don't want to improve this design, you can just hook up a 5V and a wire as an antenna and you have your working EMF detector. But if you know me, you know that I like to spice things up a little. To make this build much more interesting and way more cooler. Building only this would be too boring. So I got myself a prototype board and I started to line up and solder the transistors onto the right spots. You don't have to have a prototype board to do this, you can solder the components directly to each other. But a prototype board makes things easier, more robust, more permanent and overall much nicer. But don't get discouraged if you don't have a prototype board at hand. Yeah, this is also an optional part, you don't have to have a 3D printer or know how to design 3D prints to do this build. You can use an old cigar box or build an enclosure out of wood or thermoplastic or whatever you have at home. But while I was doing the soldering, I put on a print with the right measurements to have an enclosure for the board and to hold a battery. And this is the end result, not my nicest print, but for a project like this it's well enough. And it fits the circuit board and all the components perfectly. Yeah, the battery fits nice and snug, but I was too clumsy on this recording. Meanwhile, I found this old antenna in my junk drawer, so I plan on using it in this build. But if you don't have such a thing, I'll show you later in this video how you can create your own antenna. Here I finished soldering all the components to the main board and I created a connection point for the VU meter that will help to see how strong the EM field is around us. So here is a small piece of prototype board and here is the VU meter that I have constructed, laid out on a breadboard. 
This is also a very very simple analog circuit, basically a resistor ladder and the Schottky diodes on the other side directing the correct flow. After some minutes of soldering and for the second attempt, I made a working VU meter with four LED diodes showing the power stages. The four resistor value I chose is 100 ohm for the least significant power value, a 220 ohm for the second step, a 1 kilo ohm for the third step, and a 10 kilo ohm for the most significant power value. Here I connected up this circuit to a potentiometer and a 9 volt battery. You can see how each one of the LEDs turn on as I increase the power and how they fade when I lessen the voltage. After this I just had to connect the two circuits together and I fit it into the box. Here you can see me doing a test run for the whole contraption. The LEDs are powering on as I get the device closer and closer to this door. Behind this door is my electrical setup for my workstation, so that's the reason why it detects such a strong electromagnetic field. And this means that the device is working as planned. Hooray! The top is actually printing here. I have to reprint the whole thing because previously it was too small. So I'm currently waiting for the print and it's uh, 51% ready. And for the top I wanted to put a control interface where I can set the device's sensitivity. I initially planned the detection circuitry for 5 to 5.5 volts, but I ended up going with the 9 volt battery instead, so we have a healthy amount of overdrive that we can control with this 10k ohm potentiometer. And also we have a power switch, this very cool tumbler switch, and this connector so we can have an external antenna so I can experiment with different types of antennas or even with a powered antenna. Now this is the part I hate the most. I have to measure out the correct placement for the holes where I will be able to mount my components. I don't want to reprint this 4 hour piece so I have only one try in every aspect. And now it's time to get the Dremel and start cutting. Hopefully it will all fit just right. And the first component was a success. It wasn't a hard after all. I was scared that this will conflict with the cross stabilization bar for the daughter board. But it didn't. Now I have to fit the tumbler switch and what is harder, the antenna connector. That is a big Changas kind of connector so I really don't want to mess it up. But in the end, it came out nearly perfectly. There is a slight misalignment, but it's okay, it's just a weekend project, nothing serious. I have already wired up everything here, sorry that I cannot show you the process, because my camera just died during the work and I just discovered it later. In addition to the previously mentioned control devices, I have wired up a red status LED above the potentiometer to see when the device is on or when it's off. I have soldered this wire to the terminals of the male plug, so this will be the antenna wire, and we will build an even better antenna on the end of this. So I printed this enclosure for the handheld antenna, where we will have a duplex coil setup and this old microphone antenna on the very top. If you don't want to do the extra work for such a fancy antenna or you don't have the resources, an antenna can be very very simple. Let me show it to you. Find a very stiff wire just like this. You can find it anywhere in Home Depot or any construction store. You would want to make a couple of loops to maximize inductance and leave a long straight piece in the end to have some length too, thus having a physical coverage in space.
And here you go, this is an antenna. You'll just have to solder the shorter end of this to the base of your first transistor. I will wind one of my coils from the thin wire and the other from the wire you saw previously. I printed a core to hold the coil and I started spooling a couple of meters onto it with a drill. After I prepared both of my coils, I glued them into the casing and connected up to the microphone antenna for even better reception. Hopefully this will be sensitive enough to capture faint EM signals. Here, I took my old laptop and a power outlet to demonstrate that the device detects electromagnetic fields. It's not as sensitive as I hoped it would be. I think that's due to the inefficient antenna design I did here. If this video does well, maybe I'll consider designing a more robust and more sensitive device. What do you think? Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did so, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Good ghost hunting. Francis signs off. Peace.